This video is designed to teach you some differences between plant and animal cells. If we go back to the standard diagrams that we've been using so far this chapter, we'll take a few minutes to kind of use these as an example and compare some things together that are similar between both of them and then some things that are different. If we start off with the positive, some of the similarities, they both have a nucleus, they both have the endoplasmic reticulum, whether it's rough or smooth, they have the Golgi apparatus found in both. Uh, one thing that causes people problems is the idea that they both have a cell membrane. It's easy to see the membrane around the outside of the animal cell, but there is a cell membrane on the inside of the plant cell. So it's got the cell wall around the outside, but then beneath that wall, there is a membrane. You can see right here it says plasma membrane. Uh, that one is showing you that there is a membrane on the inside of the cell wall for plants. So it's a big, uh, important similarity. Another one that people overlook are the mitochondria. They both have them. Uh, most people understand that for animal cells, but for plant cells, since they also have the chloroplast, some people end up overlooking the mitochondria. Uh, the mitochondria allows the cell to have energy. It makes ATP. It's going to use some of the sugars that are produced in the chloroplast. So those two things actually work together in plants. Uh, they're not exclusive. So plants are going to end up having both. Uh, some other important differences. The animal cells have more lysosomes. Uh, there are some in plant cells, but they are less common. The flip side of that one is the vacuole. Plants have this large central vacuole that holds a lot of water. There are some vacuoles uh, in some animal cells, but for the most part, especially the idea of a large central vacuole, that's a plant-specific organelle. So there might be some smaller ones in some animal cells, because remember, there are a variety of cell types. Uh, these are just kind of generalizations. Each cell in your body is a little different, like different um, cell types in your body, like muscle cells as opposed to nerve cells, as opposed to blood cells. They all have different traits. So the cells that you see in these pictures are generalizations. Um, another important similarity for them are these guys. They have centrioles. Uh, that's what's used during cell division, but only um, in animal cells. So they're found in our animal cell here. You do not have an equivalent in plant cells. Cell division works a little bit differently in our plant cells uh, down here on the right. Uh, those are the main similarities and differences just uh, visually. What we'll do then is kind of go through a list so you have them as well, something to, to kind of follow along with because I know some of those were a little fast. Um, to start off with some important differences, some of the things that we went through on the other side. One of the first ones is the lysosomes. That's something that's found in animal cell, um, although, uh, again, like it'll, it'll be found in some plant cells, but it's rare. Uh, same kind of thing with the vacuole. These are found mostly in plants, but in some rare exceptions, uh, found in animals. So we'll kind of go with this so you have the clue as to which one we're talking about. The vacuole is in plants. Uh, another one that's an important difference is the cell wall. Obviously that one's just limited to our plant cells. Uh, things like fungi will have a cell wall, but they're kind of somewhere in between. We'll talk about them in a little bit more detail at the end of the year. A uh, big one, obviously, is the chloroplast. So this one found just in our plants. Same thing here with our cell wall. So one of the interesting things about going through this, you actually see that many of the differences are things that are just found in plant cells. We often think of animals as being more complicated than plants, and although in, in some respects that's true, when it comes to their genetics and their cell parts, plants are actually a lot more complicated than animals, which makes sense. I mean, animals can behaviorally adapt to things by um, just responding differently to their environment. Plants really can't do that. Plants are kind of stuck in the same place. So in order for them to adapt, they need to adapt either at the cellular or the genetic level uh, in ways that animals can't necessarily change. So plants, it kind of makes sense that they're a little bit more sophisticated at a cellular level than animals are. So then the last part is to talk about some of the similarities. Uh, they both have the nucleus. They both have the cell membrane. Uh, 
Another thing that we're seeing in both of them is the Golgi apparatus. We're seeing the ER, uh, both varieties of that one. We're seeing ribosomes. Another big one in both is the mitochondria. So they have much more in common than they have uh, that, that's different. But for the most part, uh, you should know some of the main similarities and differences between them. You should know how to pick them out visually. Uh, if I were to show you some things where you were maybe doing like a compare and contrast on a test, you should have a decent number of similarities and differences that you could pick out. Usually, you know, three or four is a standard number to know. I mean, and there's even more things than I listed here. Like when we get into things in a little bit more detail, uh, you'll be able to find other similarities and differences just beyond the basic ones. I mean, this video just covers like the basic main concept similarities and differences between plant and animal cells. As always, I uh, thank you for watching and I hope that this cleared some things up.